In the past year, I experimented with growing salad greens inside cold frames during the winter months. Come spring, I had several plants cramped together, elbow to elbow, ready to grow. I was testing the limits to see how close I could get greens to grow. I wanted to see how much salad a few square feet could produce. In one cold frame, I had freely broadcast lettuce, arugula, and escarole, as well as leek seeds during winter. All were small plantlets in spring, when it came time to remove the cold frames as the days grew warmer. In a few weeks, they all looked promising and ready to burst into growth. As mid-spring approached, they revealed how much vigor they had, reflected on how fast they grew in just a few days. I'm absolutely impressed by the way this escarole has grown. They, they're cramming, fighting each other for space, and they're very tender, delicious. I'm gonna definitely be doing a salad with these today. And I have a lettuce here, which I think it grew by itself from probably seed that I let flower in and set seed last season. Um, it's absolutely beautiful also. But the thing I really love to see is the microgreens of a weed, actually lamb's quarter. They're growing all over and most people would be mad about that, but I'm glad that it's lamb's quarter because I don't even consider it a weed anymore. It's a proper vegetable. Super nutritious and highly delicious especially as, as tender, small greens. Another thing I have is the onions, or I think, it's, now I'm, I don't know if these are onions or leeks, because the leaves are kind of round. So, but I really like the way things are growing, and there aren't that many of the annoying weeds. I usually, when I see one, I take it out, and that has been helped by the mulch. Although I, I never have enough mulch. Oh well. Mulching was key for suppressing the growth of opportunistic weeds, as well as provide constant moisture and fertility to the burgeoning greens. I decided to harvest some of the extra leaves to give the plants some additional space to grow. I was planning to eat the salad later in the day, but I decided to harvest in the morning, since they are more water-filled and crispy earlier in the day. I was, in a sense, harvesting. But instead of yanking out the whole plant roots and all, I was only taking the outer leaves. This way, I would get repeat harvests from the same spot. I knew that these plants were just beginning in their journey of growth, and they would produce much more if given the right conditions and plenty of space. Overall, the leaves were healthy looking and fresh. I did find one slug, but that seemed to be more the exception than the rule. I've noticed that the more I add mulch, the less problem with slugs I have. One here or there is not really a big deal. Just remember to always wash produce well before eating. To preserve the freshness of the leaves until lunchtime, I put them in a ceramic crock and cover them with cool water. This technique can even revive salad greens that have wilted a bit because of the heat. I left the leaves covered until lunchtime and went about doing my daily chores. When it came time to prepare the lunch salad, the leaves were as fresh as ever. I then discarded the water and washed the greens thoroughly. Escarole is one of my favorite greens to eat raw, although I do appreciate them cooked as well. They have a nice, slightly bitter taste. Sometimes they can be tough, but when you harvest young, homegrown leaves, they are as tender as they can be. I usually like to chop them into fine strips. I lay the leaves I want to use on top of one another as in a deck of cards and then roll them into a cylinder to make chopping easier. With a sharp knife, I carefully slice this roll of leaves, creating thin ribbons. I think finely slicing firmer leaves like those of escarole or kale is the best way of serving them since doing so makes chewing much easier. I dropped the chopped escarole into a bowl and went about chopping some dried figs into small pieces. The goal is to create a paste from the figs so they can be mixed amongst the escarole. 
While it may be strange to some people, I think that adding some sweet elements to the salad is a way of playing with flavor. In my opinion, acidic fruit pair really well with savory salads as they enhance the flavor profile. Balsamic vinegar complements the flavor of fruit, like figs, grapes, or apples. I added about a half a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar and half a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. I then seasoned with a dash of salt and chopped some almonds to add a nutty edge to the flavor as well as some buttery crunch. Then I just mixed the seasoning paste well and folded into the chopped escrow leaves. This is an easy yet flavorful way of making a creative salad with fresh garden produce. I just really enjoy when bitter greens are seasoned with salt, mixed with something acidic like balsamic vinegar and something fatty like olive oil. The natural flavors get enhanced. In the next block I'll share an additional update to my bed of greens, coming up right after this commercial. If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. A few days had passed and the greens appeared bigger and plumper than before. There were no signs they had been harvested. What's really encouraging is seeing just a sheer volume of salad growing in here. The plants are elbow to elbow, squeezing one another, and it's high time for me to start harvesting the leaves. Um, they do need the space, but the thing is, there's barely any space for other weeds to grow through. You see a few peeking here and there, especially in the places where um, the plants didn't grow as much, perhaps. But other than that, no. It's all beautiful lettuce. Um, I do see some onions or garlic peeking through here that I had sown and that's the good thing. There's, because of their structure, because of the way they grow up and they're thin, they don't compete with these. So it's always a good pairing. My hope was that the leeks would grow taller and would zoom up after all the greens were harvested. The other very exciting development is that there's barely any, or if at all, any slug damage or insect damage and I attribute this to the mulch. Frankly, we haven't had too much rain lately. We had some, so I suppose that when it rains more, slugs are more active. But even then, mulch seems to either give slugs something else to eat that's already decaying, or it harbors um, other predators that will feast on the slugs and therefore leave your leaves alone. Now, people in the UK usually are more re reticent about putting mulch in their beds because it's such a wet climate, cool climate, so that breeds slugs. However, I say try it. Maybe you're just gonna find the solution to your slug problems. Later on, I spotted a possible reason why my garden had not been devastated by slugs anymore as in the first year. A few geckos had taken up residence and they sure love to eat things like slugs, so any gardener would be thrilled to have geckos running around. I think that adding logs and edging to my beds provide some needed habitat for these critters. The answer is always to become an ally of nature instead of fighting it head on. Waging battle against it is foolish and will inevitably lead to failure. We may fight nature and win the battle, but nature will always win the war. That is why we must not fight it, but be collaborators with it, using its power to facilitate what we need, instead of imposing what we think we need. Nature plays the long game. All in all, this experimental bed with greens was turning out to be a success, and I was harvesting several salads from one small patch of land. The quality of the produce I was harvesting was unsurpassed. They just can't sell produce as fresh as this in the store, 
You can only get it if you grow it yourself. About a month later, after harvesting several batches of greens, the escrolls were bolting, ready to set seed and start the cycle all over again.